Hello, this is Stormtrooper 1. In case you were just way too busy to listen to our last show, this is what you missed. Is um, our Jedis, right? Force, force yeah. people. How do you feel about seeing a fight scene in a Star Wars movie that has nothing to do with Jedi and it's between Finn and Captain Phasma. Do you think that's a good call? I think it is because like, here's the thing we have to understand that they're trying to actually uh, promote that the universe is larger than what we thought. Right. So if the way I was like, I always thought was like, when everyone was like saying, Oh, why is, why is Finn allowed to use a lightsaber? I'm like, like why can't he use a lightsaber? It's a tool. Yeah, but it's also a Jedi weapon. It's sacred. It's, and if he's it is not, sacred. And if he's not that. a Jedi, he shouldn't be wielding it. And that's how I feel as a Star but Wars nerd. He can still activate it, and he can swing it like a bat. Yeah, guess what? I can also activate my dick and swing that <laughs> like a bat. It doesn't <laughs> mean I'm going to go into battle with it. <laughs> exactly. Warning from the back to tank contains adult language and discussions. If you're easily offended... Do not continue. We would be honored if you would join us. How are you feeling? Your latest workups and your condition indicate that all damage has been reversed. Recovery is total. I believe you have been quite fortunate. No further thanks are necessary, Commander, but you are most welcome. It is my function and pleasure as a matter of royal to help and heal human beings. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. All right, hello and welcome to Star Wars From the Back to Tank. I am Michael Flores, your host. I am in the uh, the Millennium Falcon trying to fire at trolls right now. <laughs> so many of them. Just so, so many. many. Uh, and of course, David is actually co-pilot right now. And he is uh, with- next to the Porg. Yeah. So how are you, Dave, today? Doing good. Doing good. I'm feeling very good after having... It's been a really quiet time for Star Wars. So. What, what are you talking about? Quiet? It's quiet, dude. With, with, we just had the Star Wars Last Jedi trailer really. It's not enough. <laughs> Jeez, it's not enough. You are a Star Wars baby. <laughs> I need more. I, I want more. I want more. <laughs> I'm not the Star Wars fan. I should be. <laughs> All right. So we have some stuff to get to, Dave. Not a whole lot... Because it, I don't want to say it's been quiet um, like you did. It's been very loud with the trailer, but there hasn't been a lot of additional news outside of that, except one big giant piece of news that we're definitely going to jump into. Thank you, Ron. Henry. As why'd you got to spoil it? <laughs> <laughs> you are not the Star Wars fan. You should be. Um, and then also we have uh, some speculation as well surrounding Last Jedi and uh, having to put some speculation to rest here when it comes to Luke Skywalker and his purpose in Star Wars, because people are at it again yep. with their crazy oh, ideas. So fun. And, <laughs> and, and, and yes, Lucasfilm is definitely, I think, feeding into it this time for sure. But it's not what people think. Simmer down. Relax. We're going to get into it, though. We're going to get into it. And yes, it has to do with Luke Skywalker and his point in The Last Jedi. Uh, but first, Dave, I think it is a must that we need to talk about the news that just dropped today. I would say about three hours ago on Twitter by way of Ron Howard's Twitter account. And yes, it has to do with Han Solo news. On Twitter, in a very Ron Howard esque type of way, he announced the official name. To the Han Solo movie. The title. Now, do you want to give us a... Do you want to drop that name on us so that we can celebrate uh, in 3, 2, 1? Ready, Dave? The name of the Star Wars three, standalone film? Two, one Is Solo. A Star, a Star Wars story. We did it! We're dancing. 
dancing right now. We're dancing. This is a radio show, so you can't see us. <laughs> but we are dancing and celebrating. <laughs> yeah. I love Ron Howard. Dude, we I did honestly it. think filmmakers should take a lesson from Ron Howard how to properly use Twitter. Th- this is how you promote and create excitement. This is how you promote. And since he oh has taken over Han Solo, it's just been a, a joy to get on Star, uh, get on Twitter and follow his account because he is not holding back. Obviously, there's things he's not tweeting out, obviously. Yeah. But he's very... He's very open as a director on set, and you don't see that a lot with uh, these big tentpole movies. You don't see them as talkative on set, and obviously, I think there's a lot of morale within the Star Wars fandom that he needs to boost. He needs to create that excitement because there was a lot of negativity on the Star Wars Han Solo film with the with the eject button being pushed on Phil and um, Chris, Chris, Phil uh, Lord, and Chris Miller. And there was a lot of questioning and people were worried about Han Solo, the Han Solo movie and whether or not it's going to be a good movie because they ended up having to shoot almost what, like 80, 90 percent of that movie. They had to reshoot it and they didn't push it back, surprisingly. But in order to get it done, Kathleen Kennedy did the expert thing. The very reason why she's in charge and she called upon someone who's very capable, Ron Howard, to come in execute the movie, get it done, shot and put in the can and not push back the release date. And did you it's notice still coming out in May? Did you notice that? Like all the drama and they bring in this is this is a testament to his directing This abilities. is a testament to how a director should be. Yeah. Because like, you know, yes, Ron Howard is considered one of the great directors of our generation. But honestly, this is actually a, a perfect example of how... Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm Lando now. Yep. I'm Lando. I'm clapping back and forth at the end. We did it! All right. this, is, this, this honestly should be shown to, to, to film school, film schools everywhere. Of, this is how you're supposed to act. This is what you, as a director... You have to bring. Yeah, it wasn't just the morale for the for the fandom, but also the morale of everyone on set. Everyone on set. And the fact that he can bring everyone together and get this movie done, man, and post on Twitter. I mean, this is I'm I'm so excited and the show that he's truly having fun. And that's the most important thing. A director has to have fun. Otherwise, you're going to see it all over the movie that he was not having Having, a good time. Having a good time. When you have the main creative force behind a a movie and he's not enjoying himself, it definitely seeps through. It seeps through through the actors. Yeah. And to have someone on Ron Howard, to have someone like Ron Howard come onto the scene and uh, and just is so positive and and just always smiling about his work on the set. You can tell that despite that he's been in the business for so many years, he's so genuine. And you can see that he's truly excited and honored to be on the set of Star Wars. And isn't that what we want? We want our directors to be happy to be there. We want them to be podunk. Yeah, we do. We want them to be fresh off the bus stop, excited. We don't want them bringing their arrogance onto the set, saying this is how it should be, and I don't care what you think. They should be on set. Happy to be there like it's a privilege. Just like J.J. Abrams was. Yeah. For for like what J.J. Abrams jumped on, that was like, you know, you got that genuine sense that, hey, he he he's happy to be on this set and he's inviting friends. He's letting people he's letting sometimes press come on, on randomly on the set just to actually take a picture or a photo here and there. Yeah. It's and been fun. It's when been you fun. Hear, when you hear like the Chris Lord and uh, uh, I think it's. Yeah. Uh, Chris Miller and Chris Phil, Miller, Lord. Phil Lord. You you were always were hearing stories like, oh, they don't like they didn't uh listen to anybody, they don't want to hear anybody's other opinions. And it's like you don't do that as a director. That's not yeah, what yeah. you're supposed to do. Yeah. yeah. And it's not about it's not just about the control that Lucasfilm has over everything. It, it's partially that. But also, when you're a director of a movie, it's not a singular voice. You're, it's a, co- a collaborative art form. And if you can't get on board that idea, then you probably shouldn't be making movies. Or you just go make a, a low-budget indie film where you don't have to answer to anybody. Any, answer to anybody, yeah. yeah. Do your own project. Yeah. So I have so much confidence for the upcoming Han Solo movie. 
I hope it doesn't suck now because I'm, 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 I'm putting all the, all the so I'm, I'm putting all the chips on the table here, Dave. In the and, back of my back of my brain, if I could, please, please don't don't be bad. We're really blowing this. Watch it be the worst movie ever. And then, and then we have to come in the next day. And go liar! You were wrong. I, I hate you, Ron Howard. <laughs> You're the worst decision. <laughs> Why did you fail me? <laughs> you? Uh, if we did that, that would be so on par with Star Wars fans. That, that would be me. That would be us. <laughs> that'd be that. That'd, that'd be our destiny right there. <laughs> All right. So Han Solo movie coming out in May of next year. Only a a mere six months after the release of the Last Jedi. So. Can you even wrap your mind around that, Dave? I can't. I can't. Six months later, we're going to be enjoying another Star Wars flag. It is a good time to be a Star Wars fan. Now, le- next news, David, that is worthy of discussion. Less news, but more of, um, you know what? News with a little bit of speculation sprinkled all over it. All right. Now, here we are again. Two years later, closing in on two years. No, two years. Two years later, and we're still having the same debate. Last time around with Force Awakens, everybody, there was a a very large consensus, high percentage consensus, that Kylo Ren was in fact Luke Skywalker. That Luke Skywalker is the bad guy of Star Wars The Force Awakens, and that's why we haven't seen him in the trailer. God damn, that was such... When you look back at it... It just doesn't even make sense. It doesn't make sense. And we've always said that. Now they're at it again. Update, new IMAX display for The Last Jedi raises many questions for Star Wars fans. Now, this article is taken from StarWarsNews.net, and I will also post this link on the on-demand version of our website. IMAX just dropped an image yesterday of their exclusive display for The Last Jedi, and it has raised a few eyebrows to say the least, according to StarWarsNews.net. So much so that we didn't even want to post the picture in our title image as to avoid any potential spoilers. Honestly, David, isn't a spoiler. It It isn't. It isn't a spoiler. But this is where, unfortunately, social media takes people down these rabbit holes of odd speculation. Now, I'm not going to take away from the fans this time, meaning at least this reasoning makes sense. The Kylo Ren stuff was just like, well... Luke Skywalker ain't in the trailer, so he's got to be Kylo Ren, right, David? <laughs> See, that, that reasoning is just, it, it was just, it's just, just flawed. That's flawed. There's a little bit to this speculation and rumor. And the reason why is because I believe that Lucasfilm is, is definitely egging it on by way of Mark Hamill. <laughs> As well on Twitter, because he loves this type of stuff. Oh, yeah. Mark Hamill loves being a troll. It's, it's kind of funny. But Mark Hamill, Mark Hamill is a troll. He likes being a troll to the trolls. And now, that's what I dig about Mark Hamill. Now, on Twitter, dated October 11th, IMAX release, uh, releases a tweet just last week. And they're promoting the IMAX experience of Star Wars The Last Jedi. It's a huge, giant cut out display and you can walk through it light side or dark side is what the tweet says feel the force with our exclusive star wars the last jedi display in select imax theaters now the thing about this display dave is choose light side or dark side right yes on the light side is all of our good guys we have Ren, or Ray. We have Finn. We have Princess Leia, Poe Dameron, and Luke Skywalker. Okay? Then on the dark side, we have Kylo Ren, Captain Phasma, and Luke Skywalker again. Not Snoke. Luke Skywalker. <laughs> now, not to say this doesn't pose questions. So the reasoning behind this speculation makes sense. I can get behind. I can understand the speculation now. However, we have to remember, go back to our Sith teachings, David. Yes. (laughs) What have we learned about Star Wars so far in this new universe? We say this every week. It's not Jedi and Sith. It's light and dark. Dark. We understand that since the very moment 
Lucasfilm was bought by Disney. There has been a singular vision and voice through all our iterations of EU, as well as the new movies. And it has been a lot less, a lot less about Jedi and Sith and a lot more. And at times heavy handed. A lot more about light and dark side, which there is a difference. And if you're a Star Wars fan and you don't understand that, you need to read up because there's a very big difference to the light side and the dark dark side. side. All that, all Jedi and Sith are, are religious sects that tap into a certain part of the force by way of their teachings and their beliefs. Okay? That's really, in a layman's, obviously there's better ways to define that, but in layman's terms, that's all it is. It's a way of belief. It's a belief structure. It's an ideology. It's an ideology, yes. It's an ideology and how they use the force that is everywhere. Okay? And the new iterations of Star Wars have had a heavy focus on not Sith and not Jedi. That story has been told. I'm not saying we're not going to see Sith and, and Jedi ever again, but I'm saying it's been the emphasis has the emphasis without a doubt has been on light and dark. Yes. Now, another way to look at this very deceptive, purposely deceptive promotion is quite simple. As we look at the trailers that's been released and all the other Star Wars EU that has come out, this is just yet another way to show the difference between light and dark and how it's about the balance. Yes. Luke Skywalker feels like the Jedi must end because that's the only way to do things. And not because he's a bad guy, not because he wants to kill the Jedi, but because he believes, I believe, through his through his study and his monk-like antics, he has learned of a better way. And it's the balance of the force. Learning to harness respectfully both sides. And yeah. I'm going to stick to that, Dave. Am, am I way off here? Like, I always talk about this balance thing, and you say, yeah, yeah, I agree. But do you see it the way I see it? I see it. Because, like, here's the thing. It's kind of like, we have to understand that Luke is supposed to be the chosen one. Bring balance to the force. Balance does not mean that one side rules over the other it, or is stronger over the other. It's very flawed. It's very a very flawed. flawed prophecy if that's what it means. And exactly. I, I feel like now that we're really scrutinizing and, and overanalyzing the prophecy and we have to continue to tell more and more Star Wars stories, we have to redefine what this original prophecy meant. And I think that's exactly what they're doing. They're, yeah. They're turning Luke into the chosen one, which isn't, I don't think, a complete mess up of George Lucas's original canon. I think it works now that we're continuing these stories. And if he is, in fact, the chosen one, like we're being led to believe it based on Star Wars Rebels and from Obi-Wan's perspective, then we know that in order to bring balance to the force, balance doesn't mean the Sith are dead or dark side wielders are destroyed and they don't exist. And there's only one ideological outlook or perspective no it means a true balance and i think that's the purpose of this marketing this marketing is to show you the balance just like luke talks about it he tells ray to reach out what do you feel the light the dark it's so much bigger again there's definitely some creative editing there for sure however trailers don't lie to you they tell a version of the story as to what to expect. They don't out. They don't just completely throw you off and distract you and just make up things because that would piss off people. They don't. Trailers very rarely do that. Good trailers and Star yes. Wars trailers. If you look at the history of Star Wars trailers, they also don't lie to you. They just tell a very simplistic story of what to expect. Yeah, and like but overall, when you think about it, it's like. The way it's being framed up right now, Ray does not know what her purpose in life is. That basically says she is out of balance. She doesn't know if she's either. She has no compass right now. Luke at this point has the compass because of everything he's been through. And if, if you take it into context, 
if he is the if he is the chosen one to bring balance to the force, he has to have a little of the dark side within him. Right. So that's why that's why I agree with you completely. It's like I understand people wanting to actually see, oh, Luke's gonna turn evil, because that's the easy way out. It's the easy way out. But I honestly don't think they're gonna do that. That'd be that that would if if Luke Skywalker was a villain or a bad guy, I would be very disappointed. I feel like it would destroy our previous movies. Yeah. We've already seen. I mean, the, the original trilogy was the original six movies were it was about the rise and fall of Anakin Skywalker. It's always been. That was the story. It was the story of Anakin and the redemption of Anakin by way of his son. And if they were to then now make his son fall to the dark side and become a bad guy. What was the point of the movie? It would destroy everything that came before. The very essence of what made Star Wars so great and such a wonderful story, a tragic story. I, I, I don't, and I don't, and, and Kathleen Kennedy gets that. Luke, the Lucasfilm story group understands that. And because they understand that, I, I don't think it's going to be as simple as that. It's not going to be it's not going to be as simple as he's a bad guy. And they're just not, they're not going to do it. He's not going to be a bad guy. Will he be a gray Jedi, as some fans call it? Possibly. Again, I don't think he's going to be unethical. I think Luke Skywalker is the moral, the, 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 the ethics of Star Wars. I think that's something he's always been. He's always been the good. This is the right side. This is good. And I'm going to draw a line in the sand. So I think he's going to have a good heart, but he may realize that in order to, to truly bring balance to the force and to create and get, or to get rid of the chaos that has consumed the, the, the galaxy for countless years now, because of the imbalance of Sith versus Jedi, I think he's going to realize that there's something different. There's something other than the Jedi in the Sith way. There's a different type of ideology. Yeah, you got to understand, even watching the trailer and looking at the dialogue, that one scene basically gives you an idea of what Luke's character is right now, where he basically tells Rey, I've seen this power before. I didn't fear it then, but I fear it now. That tells me that basically that's a character that has learned about the balance of the Force. Yeah. Not that basically you can't have all great power and expect basically an equal, a uh, uh, fair, uh, like the other side to be fair. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I get it, man. And I, and I think that this is great misdirection and I think it's an awesome, it is. an awesome marketing campaign. It's a great way to keep the fans on their, you know, on the edge of their seats, which is something that a lot of movie studios really don't don't do very well. They don't do it. They don't, they don't even attempt to create this type of mystery and intrigue in their franchises. And for them to even put together a a marketing campaign like this just makes it fun to be a star Wars fan. So whatever we're going to see, I don't think it's as obvious as a lot of people are, are trying to say, or those conclusions they're drawing. I don't think it's going to be that obvious. You got to remember a lot of the things that we're hearing about speculation nowadays. We've, we've discussed it about it before that basically a lot of times when we speculate about movies before they come out, majority of the time, probably 90% of the time, all speculation's wrong. You got to remember when force awakens first came out, there was talk that we were going to start with a floating hand of Luke Skywalker in space. Yeah, that would have been horrible. (laughs) That would have been terrible. Yeah, but everyone thought it was going to happen. Now, Mark Hamill makes a post, okay, because he's a genius at misdirection. (laughs) He makes a Twitter post at Hamill himself tweets. The villains are always looming at the back until they get a chance to loom on the front of a box of Kylo Crunch. And it was a a post of a cereal box as Kylo Ren in the front, but then the rest of the other images with the words written across the front says the villains are always looming at the back. And it's all six of the original movies, the prequels and the original trilogy. And you see that the bad guys are in the background of every single one of them. You you have uh, Mace Windu, Darth Vader, um, Anakin, Darth Vader, 
Darth Vader, Darth Vader. And then, of course, you look at the, the recent marketing that has been released and Luke Skywalker is lurking in the back. Again, misdirection that fits the story as well. It, it, it can mean it, there's a double meaning behind it. And that's the beautiful thing about this marketing. I think it's awesome. It, it, they're, they're intentionally trying to, to kind of uh, draw misdirection or create misdirection. And I think that's smart. It's fun for the Star Wars fans and allows us to speculate. But I think it's safe to say, Dave, that he's not the bad guy. I don't think it's going to be as simple as that. I don't think it's going to be as simple as that. And I think it'd be a really big shame if they went that route. They're not. They're not going to do it. Story-wise. Yeah. All right. Also, last bit of news is EA is shutting down the Visceral Games. Overhauling Star Wars game. Now, EA is the company that's in charge of a lot of the Star Wars games currently. Uh, in fact, they are the ones behind, I believe, Dave, correct me if I'm wrong, they're the ones behind the Old Republic as well, the MMO, correct? Yes. Okay. They're, they're behind that, and they're behind... Uh, Let me Google Battle that to make sure. Hold on. EEA Old Republic. I play this game. And yet I think I, the, uh, old, the, the Old Republic. Yeah, the MMO, right? Let me double check that one sec. But I know that the original games were done by EA. Oh. Like the original console games the, from the Old Republic and I believe Jedi Knight. Why is my mind going drawing a blank right now with it? Oh, yeah, it's EA. It's EA and BioWare. And BioWare. So I, I was right. Yeah, because that's I, the other one. BioWare. I play this game all the time. I should know. I see this symbol pop up all the time. So apparently EA is shutting down Visceral Games and overhauling the Star Wars game. I don't know how this is going to affect the other Star Wars games per se. However, this article is directly connected to a specific game that's seen kind of a somewhat of a de 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 developmental hell. Man, I was yes. suffering with that word. Um, Electronics Arts, Arts is shutting down its visceral game studio and making major changes to the teams in development Star Wars project. EA Executive Vice President Patrick Sutherland announced today, and this was literally today. Uh, Visceral has been working on an action adventure game set in the Star Wars universe in some form since 2013 uh, when EA and Disney announced a multi-year game deal. It's been described as a story-based linear adventure, which is what I want so bad. Yep. I think we all want that. But based on comments from Sutherland, EA is making a significant change to that title yet again. Throughout the development process, we have been testing the game concept with players, listening to the feedback about what and how they want to play, and closely tracking fundamental shifts in the marketplace, Thunderland said. It has been clear that to deliver an experience that players will want to come back to and, and enjoy for a long time to come, which is what they've managed to do with uh, the Old Republic, MMO. That game has been out for countless years now, and yet people are still signing up and playing this game continually. Uh, let's see. We will maintain the stunning visuals and authenticity in the Star Wars universe and focus on bringing a Star Wars story to life. Importantly, we are shifting the game to a broader experience that allows far more variety and player agency, leaning into the capabilities of our Frostbite engine and reimagining central elements of the game to give players a Star Wars adventure of greater depth and breadth to explore. I don't know. Um, a lot of games now, Dave, are kind of trying to move into that multiplayer aspect. Um, rather than just get, giving us a a, a clear, for a, a cut and dry video game, like okay, this is this is the game. It's an ant story based linear adventure game, or hey, this is an RPG, or hey, this is that. This is a shooter game. They're now always adding online elements as well. Yeah. I and think, I don't know if this will work for this. It may end up cutting and whatever they do. They have to be very careful. And yes, I understand that is the future of gaming. However, they got to be very careful not to cut into the success of their MMO Star yeah. Wars game. The thing that uh, when I was reading up on this news uh, that just broke today, from the sound of it, originally, Visceral Games was planning almost if people, if gamers out there are familiar with the Uncharted series, which is a fantastic series on PlayStation, one of their like flagship games, uh, game series. Basically, it was like a Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider esque uh, uh, 
game that was a linear story. And it was written by a very uh, great director, Amy Henning. Originally, they were planning on something like that, where it was going to be a, a linear Star Wars story done in the in the fold of Uncharted. And a lot of people were excited about it. However, when this news came out, it was apparently EA wanted less of an Uncharted feel and more of a Grand Theft Auto. They wanted that more of a open world sandbox feel than Uncharted, where it was like a straight point A to point B. You're just following the story of the character. EA wanted something like Grand Theft Auto for the star, their Star Wars story from Visceral, where it was a sandbox where, yeah, you have a centralized story, but you have like you can explore everywhere in the world and the world. It was more or less kind of like they wanted. Uh, in the article that I was reading, they wanted something that basically resembled Batman, Ark- the Arkham City, uh, right. Arkham series. Uh, yeah, I remember hearing games. about that. Yeah. And they wanted something like that. Yeah. The, the current story that Visceral Games was giving couldn't allow that to happen. Yeah. So that's why that, so now they're redoing the entire thing from the ground up, it seems like. Which, exactly. Which is a bit disappointing, Dave. Which is a bit disappointing. I, I know... As a Star Wars enthusiast, and I probably speak for many other people, I have been waiting for a story-based Star Wars adventure game, I want to say since Shadows of the Empire came out for Nintendo 64. We haven't had a true story-based adventure video game in countless years. And I know Star with the uh, release of Star Wars Battlefront 2, they will have elements of a story-based adventure. Wait, what's the word? I'm, how am I, Let me rephrase that. I know they're going to have... A campaign mode. A campaign mode that is geared towards story, m- story-driven story enthusiasts, which will be cool, but it's still not going to be an entire game dedicated to a story. Yeah. And I know the reason why we probably haven't gotten that has a lot to do with, of course, the fact that everything matters. And I think Lucasfilm and Kathleen Kennedy are still trying to feel everything out and figure out what they're going to do. And if they just say, yeah, let's do this video game, it may run up against potential issues that they have with upcoming TV shows, movies and books. But that's why I say, hey, it's always a safe bet to either go way into the future or way in the past." past. And give us that story or pick a character from Star Wars Rebels, pick a character from one of the comic books and tell an intimate story, something smaller scale. Doesn't have to be grand in story or a grand, a grand story can be take place on a planet. Something that would expand the Star Wars universe and tell its own unique story. I think it'd be great. And that's why I think that basically EA honestly is barking up the wrong tree, because if they wanted something like his Grand Theft Auto-esque, that's something that's going to go against the Star Wars story group because you can't control that. No. There's no. no there's no way you could actually control something like a sandbox world and expect to keep that continuity that they've hold dear to their hearts right now. <laughs> that basically, I mean, even down to, I remember when we were talking with, I think it was uh, John Jackson Miller. Yeah. They were, they're really strict with how storylines should go. And it's a, it's a real shame if EA decides, no, we don't want to follow your orders. We want to do our own game because then I bet, I guarantee you, you will not see a star Wars storyline game coming out of EA, at least out of EA. Yeah. So hopefully we're going to be getting new games. I know they have this, uh, this, uh, special VR movie, uh, that's starring Darth Vader, yep. uh, allegedly, that they've been working on, and they want to kind of make that more interactive. And remember, they, you don't want that helmet. I don't. <laughs> I don't <laughs> want a helmet. <laughs> but, however, this game, if they do it the right way, or not game, this interactive movie that's centered on on Darth Vader, if they do this right, this can actually pave the way for more of an interactive video game experience as well. So that's other things that we need to take into account as well as we're discussing these these elements of releases for Star Wars as to why they're not possibly 
releasing more. Maybe they're trying to figure out the technology, the platform, the console, what they want to do, and they're trying to experiment with other things before they get there. But they got to do it fast. They have to do it fast. How many years have they had control now of Star Wars? You know, Disney and Lucasfilm working together as one company um, since, what, 2013, I want to say? And in that time, they have managed to put out one real video game, Battlefront, and it was lackluster. So they, I, I think there's a lot of emphasis on releasing games for Star Wars fans, and there's a lot riding on their next release coming out in November, which, of course, is Star Wars Battlefront 2. Two. Yeah. All right, Dave. So this concludes our discussion this week. I want to thank everybody for listening. If you enjoy our discussions, please share it. iTunes, Stitcher, leave us reviews. Also, don't forget to go to patreon.com slash Digital and pledge $5 or more a month. And with that, you get additional Star Wars discussions geared towards the reviews, breakdowns, theory speculations centered on comic books, books, other miscellaneous topics. So please, patreon.com slash Digital, Help us keep this network afloat, uh, even if you don't want the content. It helps us stay alive and be able to put out the high quality podcast that you hear on this network. Absolutely. So I want to thank everybody and thank you, David. Thank you. May the force be with us. Hello, this is Stormtrooper One. And if you've missed any portion of the show, you can always head over to from the back to tank.com and uh, listen to the show at your leisure. Uh, we're also on Stitcher, Smart Radio, Stitcher.com, search BACTA, and add us to your favorites. Thank you. And uh, listen responsibly. And may the force be with you. And long live. Thank you for listening to From the Back to Tank. And From the Back to Tank is executive produced by Michael Flores and Dustin Lucas. Hosted by Michael Flores. David Zabal. You can find out more about our show by going to www.fromthebacktotank.com. You can also find us on Twitter at FromBackToTank, as well as Facebook, facebook.com slash FromTheBackToTank. <laughs>